What's up everyone, it's your boy Norrnrad89 here, bringing you another video, and sorry it's been a couple days since I dropped anything. I was really feeling like shit Monday and Tuesday, and just did not feel like doing anything. I did some chores around the house, but then like they just kicked my ass, and I didn't want to do anything else after that, so took a break from filming for a couple days and stuff like that, but today we are going to be continuing our Puppet Master review series, and now we are on to... Puppet Master 5, yes, we are on to the fifth installment in this franchise, and by this fifth film, for me, I'm still having fun. Puppet Master is one of those franchises that I got introduced to it at that perfect age, so when I watch these films, it's like, it's charming, it's wholesome, you know? It reminds me of a time that you less stress, you know, less adult type stuff, you know? That's fond memories, so there's a lot of nostalgia with these films. But now today, like I said, we're going to talk about Puppet Master 5, and this is a good double feature watch with Puppet Master 4 as well, the one that we previously talked about. So if you haven't checked out those reviews yet, I'll have the playlist linked in the description for the Puppet Master reviews. So let's get into this. Today we're going to talk about this film, and of course we're going to be talking spoilers and everything. This film's pretty old, so let's get into this. Roll it! Puppet Master 5 continues our story with a new Puppet Master Rick. So what's fun about this one is that this film continues that story with Puppet Master 4. It's like Halloween 1 and Halloween 2. It's the same night. So like I said, they flow really well together and they feel just like the same kind of movie. This one's directed by Jeff Burr. And also a fun thing about this film as well is that we have the same characters returning, you know what I mean? The same actors. There's no messing up of the continuity. So in terms of the continuity, when you're going through Puppet Master 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, it's all very stable. You can clearly tell which one takes place in which era and all this kind of stuff, and the story's flowing very nicely. We also have Guy Rolf, who comes back to reprise his role as Toulon, and like the voice for Decapitron, which is our new awesome puppet master, or our new awesome puppet hero. So yeah, this one still is a fun time for me. There are some negatives with this film as well, but let's get on with the story and tell you what's going on as we follow Puppet Master Rick as he's arrested in this film and in trouble because they think that he's responsible for some of the deaths from Puppet Master 4 because he's into artificial intelligence and, you know, technology and stuff. So the cops don't believe that the puppets are alive, of course. They think it's he just controls them and he uses them to kill people. So he's in trouble. Blade is locked up in the evidence locker and Susan's just, I think she's like at home or something like that. It's weird. Like Susan kind of vanishes into a different area. And then we have our psychic friend as well who's in this film. But she's in a coma because she got attacked by one of the villains from the previous film. So yes, right off the bat, it's still a good solid setup for our film. We also have two different kind of villain characters in this film. We still have Sutek here, and he sends his high priestess totem to come get the serum and kill the puppets and destroy Rick. And then we also have Dr. Jennings, who is... Uh, Rick's employer or one of his buddies or something like that and he wants to steal the serum for himself and make quick money after Rick tells him about it so and then he gets like a bunch of like thuggish dudes to go to the bodega inn with him to go search for the stuff so it's wild this one does get like I said a little wild and my main problem with this one let's talk about some negatives right away just to get them out of the way is there's a lot of filler in this one when it comes to Dr. Jennings and his henchmen and them going around the bodega inn. They really try to make it feel very creepy and kind of almost like the first film, you know, the puppets are there, they're going to kill them. And these guys, like I said, are in trouble because they're just looking around to steal them. So you're viewing those guys as the villains. But I think that Dr. Jennings storyline with his thugs is just a lot of filler and I don't really like it. And they're not the greatest actors or anything like that compared to the cast just from Puppet Master 4, it's a very small cast, and I think they all serve the film well. And this one, the, the acting does kind of hurt this film. The negative I have with this film is I really think, after I've rewatched these films again, like now, just recently, that Puppet Master 4 and 5, I think, could have been one film. I really think they just stretched this film out just to make another one and make money, which is, you know, it's understandable. That happens. People want to make money. But I think you could have chopped this film down to about 25 minutes and just threw it on to Puppet Master 4 and you would have got the same effect, you know what I mean? It would have had the same feel, you could have edited it that way and still got to the third act of this film properly by just, you know, adding it to the Puppet Master 4. So yeah, for me, that's the biggest problem I have with this film is the acting and there's a lot of filler storyline stuff that I feel like isn't as entertaining as Puppet Master 4. 
We still do have awesome cinematography though, and the puppetry work is still really good. In these first five films, I think the puppets right here are good guys, Six Shooter and Pinhead and Blade. They all look very fabulous, and these are my favorite designs of them and the way they look and stuff like that through these first five films. I like, like I said, the camera work and cinematography, especially when you're the puppets or you're like the high priestess totem and you're kind of going through in their point of view and they're like running on the ground you hear them kind of <laughs> breathing and stuff and like climbing onto things. Like I'm always, like I said, a huge fan of that. So this franchise, just for me, it has so much to offer because I love it that much. Like where it's like I said, it's wholesome. It reminds me nostalgia of like an old school time and the story I just grab onto. I'm really into the story, you know what I mean? The puppets being alive, Toulon escaping, you know, Nazi Germany, going to France and then killing himself so nobody else gets the serum. Like it's just, to me, it's an engaging storyline and it pulls me in. So that's why I love it so much. And like I said, through these first five films, there's still a very stable continuity and they know what they're doing and stuff like that. So that's what I like about it. Also, when it comes to Puppet Master as well, another thing I like is the music. Like I said, the music's very strong. It's always usually done by Richard Band. If it's ever done by anyone else, they usually just kind of throw like some other new keys in there or a new kind of flavor in it. But it's also, it's very kind of like the Halloween theme with John Carpenter's Halloween. It's always kind of prominent in the films, but they always throw like a little flair in it or something new to spice it up. Another great thing about this film is we do get a lot of moments with Blade and I like when he's escaping the evidence room and he's going through his thing trying to get back to Rick and then he ends up finding you know he's arrested and he has to get back to the bodega and like it's just there's interesting funny stuff in here but you do have to kind of take your brain out of it and like you know what I mean not really take it too seriously and overall for a rating in my book with Puppet Master 5 this one's gonna get a 6.5 out of 10 like still above average rating I still really enjoy this film even returning to it now I think the last time I saw this before this was probably like four or five years ago it's been a good minute but then watching it again like I said it's I remember it being a lot better when I was a kid of course you know those rose tinted glasses and everything but I still have fun like I said Puppet Master 4 or 5 great double feature watch and pretty soon we're gonna continue this review series we're gonna be on to curse of the puppet master which fun fact that's as bad as it gets for me i've watched all 14 of these films and for me curse of the puppet master is as bad as it gets so i'm excited to talk about that one because we're gonna get a lot of you know crap talking in and like dissing this movie and like because that one is just but Thanks for sticking around with me all for this video as we chatted about Puppet Master 5. Be sure to like and subscribe though so we can continue this journey and you're along with me as we tackle all the Puppet Master films. And then when we're through with all 14, we are going to rank them all. I will have a big ranking video so you can see where they all lie and everything. And also, I'm going to be this tomorrow, Thursday, yeah, tomorrow, I'm going to be on Mike from Did You See That, that channel. I'm going to be on that channel doing a live stream with him and a bunch of the other buddies and a bunch of us from the community. Community, so that's going to be really fun. So be sure to go to Did You See That? I'll have that linked in the description as well, that channel. So you can go subscribe and make sure you're there for that live stream to ask us a bunch of questions and throw out some stuff and everything. We're always happy to answer some questions. But thanks again, like I said, for sticking around with me all. But most importantly, I want y'all to have a safe and happy day. Peace out.